friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a March plant update video showing you what's changed in my collection. All the good, the bad. I don't know if there's much bad at the minute. I feel like I'm feeling pretty good about things, but I feel like I've done a whole freaking bunch of changing things up. I've rearranged the entire office. I've moved so many plants around into new spots and I just wanna show y'all how everything is doing and update you with my collection. So that's what's gonna be happening today. Before I get into it though, I wanna say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, welcome back. I really appreciate it. Let's get on into these updates. Do you want a Cleo update first? Cause duh. Rambunctious as ever, this little one. <laughs> you silly girl. <laughs> yeah, you're a happy little one, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's get into these plants. <laughs> so I suppose we can start in the living room. It is a little bit chaotic at the minute with plant swap stuff. And because I did a good bunch of rearranging of things, and now I need to find a new home for all of these pots. So just ignore those. They're gonna get put in storage at some point, but not yet. I guess we can go in the cabinet. I feel like that's the perfect place to start because I've actually done so much rearranging in here as well. So I've made this section of here a little Hoya section for a bunch of my Hoya propagations that I potted up recently. I had to move the Parasitica I have down a bit lower. I mean, it didn't need to be on that high shelf. It's grown so much, like, I mean, it's a bit one-sided, but it is so full. Seeing as I got this, it's probably like a few leaf plant, maybe, or even a single cutting, I can't remember, it's been so long. But it has grown so much, fully wrapped itself around the trellis so many times that I feel like we're in a good place with it, so it doesn't quite need to be up top. Oh my goodness, also, if you've seen any of my reels or shorts or whatever, you'll have seen that this is my Alocasia bisma. And honestly, it died back to nothing. All of its main leaves died and I cut it back fully. And I thought, I thought that it was a goner. It looked like it had rotten and I had just left it in the cabinet, cut back to nothing mostly because I was too lazy to throw it away. <laughs> and sure enough, it's grown new growth. So I'm gonna have a new bisma leaf. So with alocasias, I know they can do this, but I thought it was like fully rotted away. I, I thought it was gone, but I cannot believe it has paid off. My laziness has paid off and I actually get to keep my alocasia bisma. So that is super exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing when that growth comes out. And then down the bottom, I had to move my begonia white ice from the top to the bottom because it was getting so tall. It was pretty much filling the entire top section, but my bottom section is taller than the top one. So I have a lot more room down here. So it is now in this spot. I don't know if it's liking that bit of change. It's got a couple of dry leaves, but I think I think it's just removing it. Um, but otherwise it is absolutely fine. I also took my Splendid out of the cabinet. Y'all saw that, put my Dubia in there and it is really liking it. I think it's properly liking this whole situation. My other Dubia, is now off the top of the pole again. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Things are just growing. Things are properly picking up at the minute. My silver blush has a beautiful new leaf. This is the biggest leaf so far. You can see it's not nearly fully hardened off yet. And it's already bigger than the previous one. This is a random alocasia. Oh, it is, I think it's a ninja, a ninja corm. 
that I have propping in there that's finally put out some new growth. Very, very exciting. But yeah, those are like the main things for the cabinet. Like it's exciting, but it's also fairly normal. Mostly just new growth because things are starting to pop off and I am absolutely freaking here for it. Over here, not much has changed. I haven't seen any progress on my alocasia corms or anything yet. Oh, actually, my Bantel Sensation cutting that I've had in the water is starting to root. It was. Did it run off? I swear it was starting to root. I saw a root on it the other day. Well, I thought it was rooting. The other ones in here are doing extremely well still. You can see down the bottom and they're actually looking like they're starting to put out some bits of new growth, which means that we might have some new plants on the way very, very soon. One thing in this area I'm super excited about is my Sarcophylla peperomia, because this leaf is so, so close to being the big leaf of my dreams and I don't think it's anywhere near done sizing up yet. It is a little bit wrinkly um, and I don't know if that's a watering issue or what or if it'll grow out of it. It might just be that it's growing slightly unevenly but ah, uh, it is so pretty. I've been loving watching that. That was one of my goal plants for this year to get this one to grow nice big beautiful leaves because before I was just getting these sort of small ones. I want more of the big ones. And I'm getting more of the big ones, yay! On the sideboard, the main big difference is, is that I took my Glorious out of this corner. We can talk about that more when I go into the bedroom, I'll show you where it is now. But to replace it in this area, we've got Philodendron Splendid and Philodendron Majestic. Just loving this sort of vibe, I feel like. It's a better size for this thing. While I loved having my Glorious here, it was really, really, really big. Um, and these, while I hope I can get them to grow big, I feel like this is a more manageable size for this area. It doesn't overwhelm the zone too much because before it was a little bit overwhelming having such a big plant in this space. My Philodendron Martianum has put out this new leaf, the Fat Boy. But the thing is, its stem is not fat. When does it get this like really bulbous stem here? Cause that's what we love about the fat boy. Like this is just a pretty average petiole, but it's a pretty decent sized leaf. Maybe it will grow fatter in time. Maybe that's the last thing that happens when a new leaf on this one grows in. I'm really not sure. I feel like this is my first or second new leaf. Oh yeah, no, it's my second because this one also growing for me and again it is also not fat maybe it's because this is not in the brightest of spots it might need a little bit more light i have a feeling this philodendron can handle a lot more light than i'm giving it in this zone this zone is like medium bright most of the time you can see it is not particularly bright but it does get grow light from the mother grow light in the evenings and it's kind of on the outskirts of that, so maybe it's not getting as much as it might want. The other amazing thing in this section, you can see, ah, my regal is putting out a new leaf. And oh my goodness. Tell me that is not absolutely stunning. I'm trying not to touch it too much because it is fragile. I do not want to mess it up in any sort of way, but I am just so excited and really, really enjoying watching this one size up. I've been taking pictures of it because it's so cool, and if I can get it to be this size, or even bigger, that would be uh, freaking amazing. That is the goal of this whole thing, if we can get it to size up and maybe not just live with a single leaf, because Though the one leaf is beautiful, I'd rather two, or three, or four. Oh my god, could you imagine a big, huge, bushy regal? in the zone. That'd be so nice. I also moved my banana plant from on top of Joe's desk to out here because 
it wasn't getting as much light as I wanted it to. Joe does have the blinds drawn a lot of the time while he's working because he doesn't want our neighbors to just like be able to stare in at him. He doesn't like that, which is I think fair, but I moved it to this zone right, right, right by the window. So hopefully it enjoys this a little bit better and gets a bit more sun here. Not loads, because obviously we live in the UK, it is a gray country, but hopefully enough to satisfy it a little bit more. Other than that, this corner is just pretty much doing the doing the thing, doing the same thing. Oh, actually, oh my goodness, I just noticed this. My Monstera has got a new leaf on it. This last one was an okay leaf. It was not bad, it was not good, it was okay. This one, I can already see a fenestration in it. So maybe, 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 maybe it will look more like that one. Hopefully, we will see. I am very excited about it and I will keep y'all updated on that one. One slightly less amazing thing that's going on at the minute, sorry for the echo, we are in my bathroom, is these plants here, I found spider mites on all of them. And I knew there were spider mites on the Shaveriana and the Zebrina, but I found some on my Stingray Alocasia as well as my Francofolia. I think I caught them early enough on those two that it should be fine. I have treated them with alcohol in hopes that they are fine, but they're living in here for now, a little bit isolated, and I am going to continue treating them once a week for a few weeks time and hope, 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 hope that I can rejoin them into the collection very soon. My Zebrina has, however, started putting out a new leaf since it has been in here, so it must not be too unhappy if it's putting out new growth, but I would have loved to put this, or for it to put this out when it was not in a windowless room, like the bathroom. That's why I can't keep things in here long term. There's no windows, there's nowhere for any light to come in. It's just dark. Also, hello, Cleo. <laughs> you gonna have a bath? <laughs> you silly girl. In the office is where the real changes have occurred. We have basically totally flipped this space. Joe's desk used to be over there, this shelf used to be here, Cleo's litter box used to be in that corner. It's all changed around. And I honestly think for the better. Also, excuse the laundry, this is our designated laundry zone. So, not ideal, but we all have one, so it's fine. But, on Joe's desk now, we have the ZZ Raven and the Alocasia Poly because those both don't need tons and tons of light. This corner does not get very much. The window's kind of offset from it and the ZZ Raven will be absolutely fine there. The Poly might want a little bit more and so I can adjust it as needed, but I think those two look really good there. And they're also both plants that are on my Black Foliage poster, so. I mean, I feel like it works. It's like a dark corner. He's got his black desk. So it, it all kind of matches, which I think makes a lot of sense. And then the shelves, I have done some major changes on these shelves. I literally took out an entire shelf. So that's one of the things I love about these Vitzjo shelves. You can kind of customize them. It still has the bar in the middle, but you don't have to have the front bar on it. So it can just be a shelf for taller things. So I have some moss poles on there now, which I think works really well. I've got kind of a rehab box, prop box, with a bunch of different little cups in there. That's where my recent um, propagation experiment, like leaf cuttings went. And I can also put stuff on top of it and it'll still get light because one, it's quite close to a window and two, there is still a grow light on the top there. So I quite like this new zone. I'm not 100% about what exactly plants are gonna go here. This does look a little bit messy and chaotic to me, so maybe that will change around. But I like that I can put tall things like my El Choco Red on the moss pole. My bottom cut of my Cebu Blue is down there. And other tall things like my Dragon Scale can just fit and I don't need to worry about them. The bottom is still soil storage because I don't want Cleo to get into it. And then this shelf 
It's also a little bit crowded, a little bit more crowded because I obviously took out a whole shelf down here, but it does have a good amount of stuff on it, filling it up quite nicely. I actually really like how this is set up now. And oh my goodness, my peperomias in these cups are doing so well. Let me see if I can take this one off. I, I'm gonna start transitioning this one specifically into real life. Look at that. So I'm pretty sure this is a Peperomia Pink Lady. Yeah. That I got the Edinburgh Swap last year as a single cutting. And oh my goodness, look at those little pink leaves. It's doing so well. Um, I want to transfer it out of the cup section into something else. The other one in the cup is not quite ready yet, so we have time and I'm just going to leave it for now. But this one, it is so ready. Look, that little pink leaf. So ready to like come out into the world. It's just, I'm trying to acclimate it slowly because before it had the cling film secured tightly on it. Now I'm currently leaving it looser and then I can leave it open and then I can take it out. Just kind of slowly acclimating it to slightly lower humidity. I mean, not that the room humidity is very low. It's 74%, so it's not bad at all. And then the top shelf, I've kind of reserved it for prop boxes. This shelf is not currently getting a grow light, but I've got my big prop box and then a bunch of my smaller ones here. They could probably use more light, but I'll figure that out in time. This is still really, really new, and I'm still working on how I want this whole situation to be set up. But I've also got my Monstera elbow up there, which I still don't know if I'm gonna keep because those leaves at the back are pretty pathetic. Um, and my Hoya Linearis is here now because it was getting so long. I need to chop and prop it again. Oh my goodness, it's so soft and so lovely. Love it so much. Inside of the cactus cabinet, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I found a mealy bug on this one. So I found, I like got really, really close in with my phone and filmed something that I thought might be a mealy bug. I couldn't tell because it was so, so tiny. I'll put that little video clip I have on the screen as well, but you can't, like, you, you could see how tiny that is compared to the video clip. Like, it is, it was so, so small. I do not know whether or not it actually was a mealy bug, though people were saying it definitely was. Anyways, I, I wiped it off, um, and I'm going to alcohol treat it and then keep an eye on all of these plants just to make sure that it's not spreading. I know they can spread quite easily, but if I keep an eye on things, I think it will be fine. Otherwise, things are just growing pretty well in here. Oh my goodness, you can see how much this one curves towards the light, where it was curving that way before and now this way. Um, and same with the dead stick plant. It's just curving in towards the light, trying to soak up as much as it can. But honestly, cacti and succulents grow so slowly that most of them don't have other things, so that's that. And then we have this sorry state of things on top of Cleo's litter box. I really messed this up. It did not like the transfer to a new substrate. It did not like being cut. It's like lost leaves. It's fallen out. It was not a fan of the transition. And it sounds really bad, but I really don't care. I think I'm going to throw this one away because I don't feel like I need it. I don't think it's a good enough plant to actually give to anybody at the minute. Its roots are all dried out because it's fallen. I don't need it and I don't want it. So it might go in the bin and I do feel a little bit bad about that, especially since I like did work on it recently, but I don't care. It's fine. Is it so bad if I lose a plant? No, sometimes it just happens. And then on my crystallinum in the back with this like one really freaking ugly weird leaf, I think it is also putting out a new leaf. So hopefully this new one doesn't come out as much like this. It might hopefully come out flat, which would be great. I think I just need to be really on top of watering during the growing process and it should be fine. And then lastly, we have a bedroom with 
more big changes. I feel like this past month I've really desired change quite a lot and really made it happen, especially with the big glorious here. Joe approved it going on his bedside table and I think it is liking this new situation. It is much, much, much closer to a window now and I'm currently working on getting a grow light in this zone that will be coming soon but it has a new leaf coming in again this one grows so so fast its internodal space is a bit much there like excuse me why do you need that much space um <laughs> i think it was because it wasn't getting the most light over the winter time but i think this is gonna have to be the last leaf i can have on it in this space even without it going on the ground. So maybe I'll have to chop and prop and put the cutting back in the bottom again. I've done that so many times on this one. Down the bottom, there's like at least three separate vines going up. And oh my goodness, they're all putting out new growth as per usual. This plant, I just, I cannot rave about this plant enough. It is probably one of my favorite plants of all time. And it has grown so, so, so well for me. So big and beautiful, and I just love it so much. It's next to my Raphidophora tetrasperma, who is loving the pole extension here. Definitely putting out some new growth. And eventually, I'm going to let this grow out along the ceiling and really bush out because I mean, I know it can, and I know it'll be happy doing that. The plant that was here before, the pothos, y'all saw, I joined in with the other one, and now this side, if it weren't so dark, this side <laughs> is looking incredibly bushy, which, I mean, I love that. I love how bushy this is. I think I talked about this in the last updates video as well, but my Marble Queen pothos is just popping off with new growth and it is so 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 variegated you can see for a while the plant was going like kind of reverting but uh, i think it's been since the sulfur treatment oh, look at that leaf it is literally the most ideal variegation for a marble queen on there it's even got this leaf down here which is almost snow queen level ah I love it so, so much, and if this can just get filled up with loads of marbly leaves and then connect over here to the Rafita for Tetrasperma, that would be, that's goals. That's goals for this section. It will happen one day, but it will take time. Up top there, my red coral cactus is growing so much. This whole vine's come out and it's growing leaves off of that. It is really, really, really starting to fill out, which is super exciting and just growing so well. And I'm really, really proud of that one. I really do absolutely no care to it and it is still perfectly happy. Things are growing really well inside the little acker bar too. My little, oh, what was this? I forgot what it's called, but I was gonna throw this plant away because I was not loving it. The like main leaves on it were all kind of terrible, but then I noticed some little tiny baby growth and I was unable to throw it away. So I'm just waiting for that baby growth to grow out now and hopefully I will, I'll get some good new growth, maybe? This lipstick plant is crazy. Look how variegated it is. It's one of the variegated ones. I don't know exactly what type of variegated one because I got it as cuttings I think in a swap or something but it is incredibly variegated and I love looking at it it almost looks like a Hoya in its like form but the leaves are a bit softer and fuzzier as opposed to like waxy but like look at the little new growth growing in there so freaking cute oh love it and this seal has actually stayed pretty well this bit comes up all the time but i just push it back it literally only comes off to about there every single time and i just push it back and it's fine it's keeping the humidity in pretty well it's 77 percent humidity in there 
nothing crazy or anything, but I'm not trying to keep it crazy. I'm just trying to keep it higher than average room humidity. My allocation mitts Liciana has gone in where the ZZ Raven used to be. I, I really love it in here. I think it looks quite good. And I did move it here because normally this grow light is on. It'll be turning on in about half an hour's time. It turns on at 10 in the morning. And so this one will be getting a whole lot more light than it was previously. And I think it will definitely appreciate that. Because before it was just on Joe's desk and not getting tons and tons of anything. So I think it will like it and be much, much happier going forward. The other day on my Hoya Croniana, I noticed a little peduncle forming in this new growth. So I get to expect some blooms soon again, which is very exciting. This was the first plant that ever bloomed for me, first Hoya that ever bloomed for me. And I think it's just a very prolific bloomer, this one. It just kind of grows, goes crazy. And I'm hoping that this year will be no different because I do love the smell of these. It's a little bit sickly sweet, but I kind of love it. My big variegated euphorbia. I think it's doing fine here. I don't know if it is growing. I'll have to like go back and look at where it was when I first got it. But I don't think it is doing anything incredible. I don't think this is the best spot for it right next to this window. It's the spot where it's going to get the most possible light. But again, in the UK that isn't very much. Ideally I would put it in my cabinet, the cactus cabinet. But it doesn't fit in the current situation so I'm going to have to wait until I get a specific shelf. I am working on that though and that will be coming fairly soon I believe. But Hopefully, once that new shelf is in, this can have a new home and can be a little bit happier and maybe even grow noticeably for me. That would be cool. The top shelf of my desk is where I put the other bit of the propagation experiment. I figured it would get good light here with the mother grow light on it for like 15 hours a day. This one comes on to wake us up in the morning to like light up the room and so it does stay on for quite a while and I think these ones will like it. If you haven't gone and watched that video where I'm preparing these for my propagation experiment, go do that because it's a fun one. But otherwise, this zone, the Hoya Crimson Princess, doing great over there. This is the first time I've actually seen it actively growing and I've had it for years. Um, I have grown it from propagations, very, very small propagations, and that was my first ever Hoya, so I didn't really know how to care for it. But I'm slowly learning, and hopefully we can maybe get it to bloom one day? We will see. Y'all, I think I might have solved the problem with the thrips on my Monstera Standaliana. The newest growth that's coming in is looking damage-free, which I'm very, very excited about. I mean, it's just, it's at the top of the moss pole again. I know I'm going to have to chop and prop again on this one. But it's kind of weird because they've all just kind of grown sideways that way. Whereas I could totally fill up this side of the moss pole. So maybe when I do chop and prop, I can try and guide the new cuttings to this side of the pole. But I am just really, really glad because for a while there, all of these leaves were just coming in a bit crappy. And... Now they're coming in nice and beautiful again. So very, very excited about that. And lastly, we have the plants on top of my bed, which are generally doing fairly okay. Nothing that that special is going on with them at the minute. I might need to chop and prop my Burley Marks Variegata because it is getting a little bit unruly up there and maybe I can make it a bit more of a bushy plant. This leaf has also come in entirely green, so maybe it's reverted because it's not getting loads of light, but the leaf before it was almost entirely variegated, so I really don't know. It's a bit of a strange one, that one. My philodendron cream splash cuttings inside of the wider Brazil plant is doing really, really well. I have gotten some new growth on it since... And it's just generally a happy camper up here. I think this section does love having the grow light on it in the evenings. That does help quite a lot 
with making sure that they're getting enough light because you can see it's not incredibly bright. It definitely looks brighter on my camera than it does in real life. So they're not getting loads and loads of light during the day, but these specific plants don't need tons of light during the day. But in the evenings, it's quite nice to give them that little boost to hopefully get them to grow a little bit better. So that is it. That is what's going on in my collection at the minute. I am feeling so good about things. And I know I said this last time in my updates video, but I genuinely do think it is because I have lowered the amount of plants that I have and gotten rid of some of the plants that were causing me major stress that I didn't even like. Who needs plants that give them stress that they don't even like? No one. <laughs> get rid of those plants. If you're just not enjoying them, get rid of them. I've sold a bunch. I've swapped a bunch. It's worth it. Um, <laughs> That being said, I do think I might do a little bit of a haul kind of soon because I have managed to um, stick to my plant ban this year. This is the first year I've ever actually stuck to a plant ban from October until hopefully the end of March. I will have not bought any plants. That's going to be six months. I think that's the longest I've ever gone without buying plants ever. So I might give myself a little treat of a plant haul as a celebration to that and get a few little things that I like but we will see if I make it through the end of March then I get myself a treat and I'm allowed to and it's all good um but yeah that's that's everything that's going on I'm loving the rearrange I'm liking the new spots that everything's in and I feel like it's kind of a refreshed a refreshed home I do love a little bit of a change up. I don't know about any of the rest of you, but I was one of those kids that would rearrange their bedroom like every six months. <laughs> and now that I have a home, I like still want to be doing that. And though we don't have as many like permutations in this space because it is not gigantic, the space is not big. And there's only a few ways that all the furniture can fit when I can do something like rearrange the office like entirely. Oh feels so good. I love it so much. So very, very glad I was able to do that and get some plants hopefully a little bit better conditions than they were in before. Hopefully. So yeah, that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future. If I mentioned anything in here that you want to hear more on, let me know and I can make that happen for you and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to keep growing. Bye!